Psoriasis can be actually one of the most difficult things for people to get rid of because it's an autoimmune health issue, because it can have some genetic aspects to it, and because it takes so many different changes, meaning you could change your diet, but still have psoriasis. You could have a perfect diet, meaning like gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, all that stuff's great, um, but then you still have psoriasis. You could have great dietary changes, you could be doing a great detox program, taking the right supplements properly, but then you're stressed out of your mind and you still have psoriasis. And it's such a big picture, and I think that's why I've kind of fallen into this realm of psoriasis, not only because I had it for 30, uh, 34 years from age four to about 34, and so I've experienced it personally, and I had to personally get rid of my own psoriasis, and I have for the last six years, um, but I think I fell into this because I, the way I see health is never one ailment versus another ailment and how do I get rid of an ailment, but the way I've seen health is that if I, if I have some sort of a health ailment, it's because my body is not in balance and it's not healing regularly or, or the way it's supposed to, right? And so the key and the answer is always how do I get my body back in balance? In this video, I've, I've done a, two other videos like this, but they're on nutrition on the foods I ate during that 34 years, or I'm sorry, not during that 34 years, the foods I ate towards the end of that 34 years, the last probably five or six, seven years to get rid of psoriasis. And um, so I walk you through exactly what I ate. I did one on the supplements that I took, and then this video is gonna be on the lifestyle changes that I made, meaning how did I exercise differently? How did I, um, you know, how, how did I change my environment around me in terms of toxins? What are some ancillary things I did like grounding and other techniques that I'm gonna walk you through that I personally did, and with all those things, the nutrition, the supplements, and the lifestyle changes, I was able to get rid of my psoriasis, and again, it needs to come together, okay? So make sure you subscribe to this channel if you like the stuff that we're putting out there. Uh, and make sure you hit the notification button so you can get more of the awesome, I think, awesome videos that we're putting out regularly and share this stuff. People don't understand that concept that I just said there, that health isn't about ailments. Health is about healing, it's about balance, it's about your body in the right state of mind so it can heal, not necessarily just trying to get rid of symptoms, which is what the rest of the medical community is doing, okay? All right, so when we talk about the other lifestyle changes that I made, this is the fun stuff, and I could go down a lot of rabbit holes. I'll do my best not to here. Um, but let's say, let's start with exercise. Okay, so for most of my life, I, I grew up exercising or working out or, or playing sports. I played soccer through college, um, and you know, it's just something I've always done. So exercising has not only been natural to me, it's something that I crave and I like to do. And so I, you know, I grew up doing that. And, but during this time, I also knew that exercise was stressful on the body. And so if I was to over-exercise like I have many times in my life, because it's to me it's just fun, I enjoy getting out there and going hard at things, um, that I could actually hinder my immune response and hinder my immune system in this process. And so and when I was really trying to just heal and get, and get my body in a good, healthy place, I created a game plan exercise-wise where I was doing three days a week, a high-intensity, short-duration type of exercise. And that changed up, but essentially it was no more than 20 minutes. Okay, and so I would do things like I would go outside and sprint as hard as I can for 20 seconds, and then I'd walk for 20 seconds, and then I'd sprint as hard as I could again for 20 seconds, then walk for 20 seconds, then sprint again, and then I would take about a two minute break, and I would do three sets of that, and that would be the workout. Okay, now I'd add different exercises in there and things like that, but that's the core of, of what that high intensity, short duration type exercise was. So if you're sitting there at home and you're like, yeah, I want to do that. That sounds like a good exercise for me. Um, and it is really scientifically some of the best type of exercise you can do for hormones, for immune health, for keeping cortisol levels down, but increasing a muscle. Um, then maybe if you're someone that's you're not used to exercising, maybe you start out with jumping jacks. Maybe you start out with half jacks. Uh, maybe you start out with just wall push-ups. Maybe you start out with just air punches. Something that's like a high intensity type of workout is going to be really big. So the high intensity exercise is really a big part of it, it makes, a, it makes a big difference. But I would do that three days a week, so I wouldn't do that every single day. I would always have a day in between um, to give my body recovery, and you think, well, that wasn't that hard. Yeah, but when you're going at 100%, it actually is more than you think, okay? And then, the in, especially if you're not someone that exercises regularly, okay? Now, the in-between days, I would do some sort of a weight training or resistance training type of exercise, and this wouldn't be high intensity. I'm not doing like, you know, I'm not doing burpees and, and uh, hang cleans and lifting over my head and all that kind of stuff. I'm just doing, you know, I'd sit down and I'd bench press. I'd sit down and I'd do leg, or, um, leg extensions. I'd do um, squats. I'd do things that had weight to them and resistance in terms of intensity, but not in terms of me just going as hard as I could for periods of time. That workout usually would be 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes long. Um, I would never go way, way past kind of just that, that my ability that day where I was exhausted later on. If I ever felt tired the rest of the day, 
I knew I had gone a little too far. Okay, so three days a week high intensity, three days a week resistance, and then I would have a day off where I just you know do life. I have an active life, so I'd go out walking, maybe we'd go on a hike, or just something simple, right? Where I wasn't focused on exercise at any point in the day. But as you can see, exercise wasn't something crazy that took a ton of time. My longest workouts were 45 minutes, my normal workouts were 20 minutes. And to this day, that's still typically where I'm at, about 30 minutes at the most for an actual workout, because they shouldn't have to be a long period of time. You get yourself moving, you get your body blood flow up. The rest of your day should be movement. So one thing I didn't do, and this is the hardest part for most people, is I didn't sit. I didn't spend like this, probably this video right here would be the longest period of time that I actually just sat down. Luckily for me, as a um, you know a healthcare provider and a, as a chiropractor, I'm moving all day long. I'm either moving towards the next patient, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a physically working with a patient, or I'm communicating with them in a way where I can stand and teach. You know, and so luckily for me, I'm not doing a lot of sitting, but for some of you, if your job is sitting, then you can't sit all day long and just exercise once a day. You're not gonna get what you think out of it. And so you have to move all day long. So get yourself a wobble cushion or get yourself something that while you're computer working, right, with good ergonomics, computers up high, shoulders back, that you're actually wobbling, get a wobble cushion. You can move a little bit throughout your day. So you can take, you know, every 30 minutes, get up and stretch and do a wobble cushion to get yourself moving. And you'll notice your energy levels are way better by the end of the day on that too. Um, so exercise, that was my core. And what I did for a pre-workout pre was um, sometimes I'd have a little bit of coffee because I work out in the morning. So I drink my coffee and then go work out. And what I did for a post-workout is I'd have something to eat right? Duck eggs, great new protein value. I didn't do a bunch of protein shakes. Actually, I found that protein shakes for me uh, were things that uh, kind of hindered my digestion and, and I felt kind of gassy throughout the day. And I found that when I took all protein shakes and I've tried them all, uh, all, all different types, meaning like whey, pea protein, chia protein, hemp protein, um, you name it. I've, I've bone broth protein, which if you're going to pick one, I pick bone broth for you, by the way. But um, uh, I tried all those and they still kind of gave me a little bit of gas. So I just took those out completely. Just again, we're talking about exactly what I did, not saying this is what you have to do. So that's the, that's the exercise portion of it and really will make a big impact for you. So the other lifestyle changes that I made throughout this process um, really were, were pretty cool. Some of them were simple things that I just learned and tried and um, I think they work. They might not, I don't know, but I like doing them in the research studies and sh show that they work. And you know, I got rid of my psoriasis. So, uh, uh, you never know like exactly which thing if you took out would have been the one thing that kept it from happening or kept your body from getting in balance. I don't know, but um, I added things in like grounding where I go outside every day and walk out barefoot. All right, I'm, I'm pointing out there because that's the window into my backyard. So I go outside every day, walk outside barefoot, and um, yeah, I mean, do that at least 10, 15 minutes a day. So to create increase energy, it's great for the cells, it's great for the overall energy production in your body. Um, I would do that, I would do an infrared sauna. We actually have one in our house, but if you don't, there's plenty of companies now that uh, you can go and pay, I think 20, 25 bucks, 30 bucks, and sit in their infrared sauna a couple times a week. But I would do that typically on a daily basis. I would only do about 15 minutes a day of an infrared sauna, um, and I found that to be very effective. There's lots of health benefits to infrared saunas. Um, it, you know, we'll do a whole video on that, but you can research those, those are very beneficial. Um, some of the other things that I, I did in this process were, um, uh, was napping. I love to talk about napping because it's one of the things I think helps the most. Um, there's no way to get your body in balance and recover than to sleep, right? Or to just, just rest. And so sometimes I didn't sleep every day during a nap, but I called it a nap because it was my time that I would stop. I would sit down, I would, whether it was, or, or sorry, lay down. If I didn't have the ability to get home and take a nap, then I would just get in my truck, I would you know, turn some music on, turn the air conditioner on, and I would lay the seat back and take a 20 minute nap. I'd set my timer, lay there with my eyes closed for 20 minutes. Sometimes I got a good, nice little fall asleep, wake back up. Sometimes it just laid there. And I'm telling you what it was, how I did that, because I think people don't do naps because they don't think they can fall asleep or they don't do naps because they don't think their body will calm down and they don't think it's worth it. But just you stopping, timing yourself to where you're not thinking about, am I done yet? And you just close your eyes for that 20 minute period of time is really, really beneficial for your body, okay? And I do that, that's still to this day, I do that on a daily basis. Um, if I miss a nap, I can absolutely tell in the second part of my day. So 20 minute is great for recovery time when it comes to um, naps, okay? And the other, the other real lifestyle changes that I made here, guys, were um, 
lifestyle changes in terms of like my environment, okay? I, I call it detoxing your environment, meaning the world we live in today is incredibly toxic. Some of it we can't control. You know, when I walk outside today, there's gonna be probably aluminum in the air and there's all kinds of chemicals and, and things like that in the air. There's water, I'm sorry, there's, there's, um, there's chemicals in our water system that sometimes we can't get rid of in our food system. If they tested all of our food, all of it has something in it. Um, and so there's some we just can't get rid of, but there's some I can control. And the things that I can control are what I put on my body. I can control what I put in my body and I can control when I'm inside as much as possible what I'm breathing. Okay. And so I look at it that way. So what you put in your body, by the way, if you want a detox PDF, I have a PDF that I can send you that literally teaches you what not teaches you, but shows you kind of like a list of all the areas you want to start to detox in your environment. And you just quick list, you go down that and you start to change those things. Um, it's pretty cool. If you want that, comment in the um, section below that you want that. If you want the gut healing diet, by the way, as well, which is pretty much what I ended up creating as an eating plan after all this, um, just comment in the section below and I'll get you that PDF as well. Just say I want the uh, gut healing diet. So with detoxing your environment, I ultimately went into my environment and said, okay, where, why do I have all these chemicals? I have air fresheners in my car. I have air fresheners in my house. I have, um, uh, um, laundry detergents that have all these scents on them. And I just started getting rid of all the scents, all the things that had smells to them that were chemical-based smells that were tricking my brain and tricking my body and building up in the body, okay? So I changed my laundry detergents to organic, non-scented. I changed the uh, dishwashing soaps, right? And the, all the soap, soaps that we use on our skin, uh, shampoos, conditioners, all that stuff we changed to organic, and non-chemicals and non-scents. And then I went to um, you know hair products, took all the scents out of that, went with more of a clean organic hair product. Um, you know, for me, I don't have much more than that, but if you're, you know, for females, changing your beauty products, changing those things around to something like beauty counter or some sort of organic based product that's gonna have real things because our skin absorbs stuff more so than when we actually drink something and there's less of a defense system. If you, if you put a chemical right here versus a chemical right here, it's gonna have a big impact on your body. Okay, and so I, I started changing that. The other aspect of detoxing my home is I started to look at um, light bulbs. So light bulbs, the LED lights actually are very um, stressful. So the whole goal again is to reduce stress on the body that I can control. So I took my light bulbs out. They were all LED based because that was the way to do it to apparently save money. I didn't notice that, but hopefully if any of you notice saving money on LED bulbs, <laughs> bulbs, comment below. Yeah, I saved a lot of money. But I changed back to the white, you know, the white light, soft white light, whatever they're called, uh, light bulbs. I put those in our house. It looks great. I actually like it. It doesn't hurt my eyes as much. Uh, but LED lights just stressful on the body. They've proven to be stressful. We look at it. That's why we look at a computer screen. It's so stressing on the body. I add it in in that same manner. If I'm working on a computer, I have blue lens glasses or blue screen glasses that block the blue light coming in on the phone. I have an actual cover that goes over my phone that blocks blue. Uh, blue light and there's an app or there's a, um, a um, mode on your phone where you can change it to off of the blue light so it's not so hard on your eyes. So that was some of the things we did. We also took our, our devices. There's so much I can go through guys. I'm, I'm just naming it some of the things. If I told you everything, we'd be here all day and you'd be overwhelmed. But I, and this might overwhelm me. I took our devices and I added electromagnetic frequency stickers on them to help block electromagnetic frequencies. I got an electro, you don't have to do all these things. You can just go with what I'm, I'm telling you. Um, but I got electro, uh, electromagnetic frequency tester to tell how much electromagnetic frequencies was in the environment because that hurts you at a cellular level. And then I um, got bowls. Uh, this one's really cool. Um, I got bowls of shungite, right? I love saying that word. But shungite, which is a volcanic rock that actually absorbs electromagnetic frequencies. You put bowls of that around your house, they're cheap as junk. You put those around your house, they look kind of like decorative, but I actually go through with that tester, EMF tester, and all the EMFs go down in the areas that the bowls are in. Pretty cool. I also have a necklace that I wear for EMF protection. Uh, Harmony is the, is the brand that I ended up getting, but there's other brands too, okay? And then we got, eventually we got for our whole house, something called a blue wave, a blue shield, I'm sorry, a blue shield that you plug in and it creates an environment, a shield around the whole house for electromagnetic frequencies. We don't use a microwave. I quit using that a long time ago to help with that aspect of it. I have a timer on our, um, on our Wi-Fi that turns the Wi-Fi off at night when I'm sleeping, okay? So it's set for 11 o'clock. I'm not on Wi-Fi after 11 o'clock. 
So it turns the Wi-Fi off for me and it turns it back on at 5 a.m. before we wake up. That way I don't have to mess with it and doesn't become a burden, but it's also not a burden on my body, right? And some of these things, guys, I get this might sound extreme and it could be, I don't know, but I'm just, I'm just walking you through all the changes because I can't tell you exactly what got rid of my psoriasis, but I can tell you that I made a ton of changes and it boils down to how much stress is on your body and how much stress is your body able to handle, right? Some people might be able to do all those things and not have any issues at all. Good for them. They live to 105, 110. You see the person that drinks and smokes and does everything wrong, they live to 100. But that's not the majority of people. The majority of people, their body can only handle so much and it's not as much as maybe that person. So I would highly recommend doing everything you can to get rid of the stuff you can control. Whether you think it's working or not, it's gonna have at least an impact on your health and all these small things add up, okay? So that's some of the things we did. We changed all, we got rid of all chemicals, all the smelly stuff, right? The plugins, Glade plugins. When we go on vacation to an Airbnb or something, the first thing we do is find that Glade plugin that they all put in and we pull that sucker out, open the doors and air it out. Um, because that's, it's just shown to be carcinogenic and toxic. Um, and so there's just so many things you can change there. I hope that was good for some of them. If you want the PDF that will walk you through all the different areas that we actually changed, just put in the comments below, give me the PDF for detoxing my environment and I'll get that for you and um, we'll be able to share that with you as well. So also one of the biggest things I changed, and this is just because I, you know, I got into this world as is I had chiropractic here every week and, and sometimes twice a week. And I know that's not easy for everyone to do, but I can tell you that that has become one of the most beneficial things I've seen for patients in our office. Um, because the thing is, is that chiropractic helps your body handle stress. And when it does that by removing physical stress from your body, it gives your body an opportunity to balance and heal, and it keeps full range of motion throughout the spine. And 90%, get this, so if chiropractic helps get full range of motion throughout the spine, and 90% of the stimulation to your brain and your nervous system that runs every organ tissue cell in your body comes from the movement of your spine, chiropractic ultimately helps the body just balance and stress. And I've seen digestive problems go away. I've seen ulcerative colitis go away. Um, this just from chiropractic care, by the way. I've seen anxiety go away. I've had girls come in that don't have a menstrual cycle. They start having their menstrual cycle. We've had cysts disappear um, just from getting chiropractic care. We have tons of people that got pregnant that were trying to get pregnant and couldn't and have tried everything else to get pregnant. Uh, let's see, constipation going away. I've had people that are constipated. I had a girl at one time, six years of her life constipated. Her first adjustment, she's been going every day since. It's pretty cool. And it's because it balances the nervous system. It's not because it treats anything. And that's why I love it is because we're not treating things. We're balancing your body, helping your body balance. I'm sorry, removing interference from your body's ability to heal and your body will heal itself. It's made to heal itself. Chiropractic isn't always the only answer, but I can tell you if you're someone that really wants to get rid of an autoimmune response, I would highly recommend doing chiropractic care with that process as well. Okay, but the big picture guys again is how much stress can your body handle? So two things with that, number one, reduce the stresses that you can control, strengthen your body up by the things you put into it and the things you do with it. And finally, have faith in God to take care of the rest because you can't control everything and you're gonna go crazy trying to. So I hope this video didn't make you go crazy about trying to take care of all this stuff that you can't control. Um, but essentially, it's about getting back to that. Hey guys, if you like this video, subscribe to this channel, like this video and subscribe to this channel. Click the notifications button so you get um, notified whenever we put things out there. And if you want any of the resources that I talked about throughout this video, just comment, give me those resources and I will get them to you, okay? Because the goal of this channel is to help you become your own health expert, not simply just teach you a bunch of informa information. All right, you guys have an awesome day. We'll talk to you next time.